Hi everybody, my name is Mitch Bone and I am the president of the MSUP Democrats and also a member of the Yellowstone County Central Committee. Um, and I'm here today with Public Service Commissioner candidate, Valerie McMurdy. How are you doing today, Valerie? I'm doing well, Mitch. How are you? I'm doing really well. So one of my, or my first question for you is what made you want to run for Public Service Commissioner? Well, um, I think it was a lot of the publicity and the things I've been reading about since last August when the Public Service Commission, um, or actually when Northwest Energy submitted their 20 year plan last August, energy plan, and there were no renewables in it. And, um, you know, that initially was not well known. It was, it was not advertised because it's really typical of this public service commission that they don't uh, invite the public. They don't invite the public to meetings. Their meetings oftentimes are secret. So anyway, um, fast forward, this got out that this 20 year plan had no renewables in it and they were gonna build another gas fired power plant, which was in the 20 year plan and, um, and then rely on coal, which coal is the most expensive energy that we have right now and so then come December they had hearings and the plan was they were only going to have two public hearings because they were hoping assuming that they wouldn't get much response which oftentimes is what happens so they had two meetings I think it was the first week of December and both meetings two public meetings both on the same day like a couple hours apart and it's like were they really serious about having public input and it was December, the roads were icy, the group from Billings couldn't make it up there, and they had overflow capacity at each meeting. I heard like over 200 people, people out in the hallways could not get in. And so then the PSC decided, well, maybe we better have some regional hearings. So again, so that was probably my impetus. And I started reading about that, and and then you saw the picture of the five Republican men mm -hmm. that were on this. And I thought, you know, they need, they need a different perspective. They need somebody else on that commission. And someone suggested to me that I run and I just start thinking about it and talk to some people and no other Democrat stepped up to run for district two. And so um, I certainly waited till March 6th because I was hoping that someone else might step up the plate and then I mm -hmm. could work on their campaign. And they didn't. And I really, it came down to if I don't run, how will I feel? And I thought, you know, I want to, I want to make a contribution and see if I can't make a difference by running and getting on the public service commission. So that was how I made the decision. That's great. Thank you for Wasn't stepping up. Decision. It was not an overnight decision. <laughs> No, it never is, and thank you for stepping up. Um, so what exactly does the PSC do, and, um, <clears throat> excuse me, what is the office, or what does the office entail exactly? Because a lot of people don't know about this office. Good question, because I, pers I myself did not know all what they did. Um, and whenever I would tell anybody, in the three months it took me to decide that I was thinking of running, I mean, without fail, every person said to me, what is the Public Service Commission? Mm -hmm. And so it is a regulatory agency. It's the, um, it, it impacts their life on a daily basis. It's really one of the most important agencies in the government because it affects everyone who gets utilities. Um, but it also impacts water, uh, wastewater regulation, uh, water treatment plants, um, electricity, utilities, um, some transportation. Uh, some telecommunications, and it helps with the government uh, in gas pipeline regulations, safety regulations, and some railroad safety regulations. So it really is a state agency that impacts our life, but it's sort of in subtle ways, you don't realize it. And I think the thing that, um, another thing that sort of motivated me, I and mean, there's, the more I learned about it, the more I thought, boy, we really need to have somebody on there who cares about the voter, cares about people is that what they do impacts, it is a pocketbook issue. It impacts when you write that check every month to pay for your, your utilities. And oftentimes, I mean, what I have found is that 
if you get your electricity from Northwestern Energy, which 374,000 Montanans do, we pay the highest uh, electrical electricity rates in the Northwest. And, okay. and the reason for that is because in the last 12 years, we have had a Republican majority on the Public Service Commission. And right now we have five Republicans. It is all Republican. And in the last eight years, they have not seen a rate increase from Montana Power that they did not like. And, you know, it is not called the Corporate Service Commission. It's called the Public Service Commission. And so from the first time I started thinking about running, my thought was, I want to put the public back in the Public Service Commission. It needs to be, it's called the Public Service Commission for a reason. It needs to be focused on the public. So we are elected, the Public Service Commission is elected to regulate rates of utilities and these other agencies, these other uh, companies that I mentioned. But at the same time, they're to guarantee that you have good service. So they have to walk a fine line between the company making money because these companies are all monopoly companies. We mm. don't have a choice who we get our electricity from. We have to get it from Northwestern Energy. Right. Some Montanans get it from um, MDU in the eastern part of the state. Some get it from electrical co-ops. But if you get it from an owner, uh, owner utility company and a monopoly company like North Northwestern Energy, we don't have a choice. And the Public Service Commission is there to protect us from unfair rate increases. And that is not what they're doing. That is not what they're doing. It is not what they're done. They have done. It is not in the history of these Republican commissioners. They seem to pass off any rate increase that my, that Northwestern Energy wants to the rate payer. And it doesn't matter. And, and I have felt since I started looking into this that this really should be a nonpartisan race because it's not about Republican, Democrat, red, blue. If you rent, you pay utilities. If you own your home, you pay utilities. Mm -hmm. um, it's a pocketbook issue and it's how much we pay. And so I think that is an issue that is important for all Montanans is what, especially nowadays with COVID-19, people being laid off, I think what we pay for our utilities is really important and to have someone looking out for us is a good thing except Definitely. yeah the, these public service commissioners have failed us in that they have failed miserably so you mentioned in your first little bit that your um office is based off of districts what counties does your district include other than yellowstone county well i just happen to have <laughs> can you see that yep Okay, I can so, a little bit. I can't really see like your district two. We are district. I'm district two. Our our, our district is district two. It is ten counties. Um, it goes from Carbon County in the southwest up to Prairie County, down to let's see Fallon County. I've been calling. What's oh I can't see the bottom one. Um, it starts with a C. Anyway, um, there is. Custer County, Fallon County, Prairie County, um, and Rosebud County. So 10 counties all together. And, you know, this is, this is a steep climb because I have been contacting the central committees. And when I called the chairperson in Fallon County, I said, well, now how many Democrats are there in Fallon County? And she said, oh, about three of us. <laughs> So, yeah, I've um, witnessed that calling into Eastern Montana. The numbers yeah. are not, and not again, very high. No. And like I said, this is a pocketbook issue. I truly think if people knew what they were voting for when they voted for Public Service Commission, they would make different choices because the history of these commissioners is, is not pro-consumer. It is not pro-the voter, pro-rate payer. Right. They are voting... You know, so if they're not representing the ratepayer of Northwestern Energy, who are they representing? Well, it certainly seems like they were working for the shareholders. Mm -hmm. And I just checked online in the last few days. 
Northwestern Energy stock price has gone from $24, I think in 2007 per share, and it's been up as high as $75. It's now down to about 64. So, wow. you know, that the shareholders uh, price increase of their shares is on the backs of the ratepayers of Northwestern Energy. And like I said, we pay the highest, we have the most expensive utility rates in the Northwest. Wow. So what are some of the issues, you mentioned some of them that are facing the Public Service Commission? Well, you know, just uh, uh, Tom Ludy works for the Gazette and he is a writer for the Gazette and he is continually writing. He's like an expert on Northwestern energy. And so just recently there was a meeting, a Zoom meeting of the PSC. This was, I think, late last week in which uh, Roger Koopman from Bozeman wanted next fall to have a uh, climate change sort of symposium. And Roger Koopman's probably one of the most conservative legislators we've ever had in the legislature. He's from Bozeman. And he is on the Public Service Commission. And he said, you know, I want to invite people on both sides of the issue. You know, sort of, I thought, well, this, this is good. Well, the commissioners met uh, behind closed doors. They Zoom meet. They did not announce their meeting. There was not any public allowed to, uh, to listen to the meeting. And again, this is a public service meeting. Right. It should be, you know, our open meeting laws should apply. Mm -hmm. And in the end, they voted down ha having a conference, three to two. Uh, Roger Koopman and, and um, Tony O'Donnell from District 2 voted to have it. But it was still voted. It was defeated. So that's wow. one issue. Certainly the ongoing issue with units three and four in Cold Strip is, is big and the thing that I think a lot of people have heard recently is that Northwestern Energy would like to buy 25% of, um, I think it Puget Sound's shares of Coal Strip 4. And the reason for that is all these utility companies in the Northwest, in Washington, have, cannot, after 2025, <coughs> excuse me, let me get some of my coffee here. And not can no longer produce energy or supply energy that is coal produced, and so they have to get out by 225. So Northwestern Energy wanted to buy 25 shares, which would then add to their 30 percent shares that they already have of Unit Four, which would make it 55 um, percent. And and of course they were going to buy this from Puget Sound for one dollar, which just wow. sounds like such a wonderful deal. Unfortunately, what they didn't tell the public is that there's a lot of repairs and long-term costs attached to that. Um, you know, the heaters are old and worn. Um, they had a breakdown of three and four a couple years ago, which they're still trying, I believe they're still trying to pass on the repairs to the ratepayer, um, which Washington just told North um, Coal Strip that they can't do, or told North Northwest Energy, told Coal Strip that they can't do that. They will not pay for the repairs. Um, and so it, there's all these hidden costs. So that's an issue of what's going to happen with unit three and four. And it, right now I just was in, I think, Monday's paper that I think Talon Energy, I think it was, um, they decided they want to buy part of that 25% from hmm. the sound. And, and again, they can only use it till 2025. So I'm not sure exactly why they want to buy it, except then they're going to turn it turn around, I think, sell it on the open market, sell the energy on the open market. So they have that problem with unit three and four. They have, um, certainly there's the ash pond cleanup that uh, the remediation of the ash ponds, which are toxic and leaking in coal strip, that that has to be taken care of. And certainly Northwestern Energy should be the one that does that. Uh, they haven't submitted a remediation plan, which would hire, you know, anywhere from, you know, I've heard upwards of 300 people in the coal strip area to work on the remediation, and it would probably take oh. anywhere from 10 to 25 years to do a total cleanup of the ponds. So there is, there are jobs there. Uh, That's great. 
Yeah, and the other thing is, again, looking at renewables. Um, Montana has great wind in the wintertime. And there's a company oh, uh, in the northwestern part of the state. It's, I believe it's native owned. It's called, oh, I just was reading about it. Anyway, they are a big wind energy company and they want to, um, and they're supplying some of that energy to the Northwest, to Washington. So these are issues that, you know, they're supplying energy that, this wind energy that we could be using in Montana. So I think there's issues with that. There's certainly, you know, the other issues ongoing with, you know, MDU rates, um, looking at the gas pipeline safety. So, I mean, there are enough things to keep them busy. Um, but right now, the, probably the biggest one is the coal strip unit three and four and, and Northwest Energy's relationship there. Um, another big issue that goes back to February 17th or 18th, there was a meeting in which um, the coal strip signs a contract with the coal company, Rosebud Mine there, mm -hmm. for the coal for the next five years. And Northwest Energy requested that the terms of that contract be kept secret from the public. Why would they do that? Because we're going to be paying for that. We, right. we have a right to know what they're paying for the coal. And so why it's a contract that supplies our electricity. Why would that be kept secret? And so at this point, the PSC gave temporary approval. And I haven't heard sometimes those temporary approvals they sort of hope that people forget about them and then they just stay there. So that was February, like I said, 17th or 18th, that meeting. And, okay. you know, I feel like two of, the, two of the issues that I'm concerned about with, with the Public Service Commission is transparency, because they do so many things behind closed doors, as well as um, accountability, because they have a very high absentee rate. And it's not just Tony O'Donnell, but it's all of them. They call in their votes uh, or they're absent. Wow. And, um, you know, I'm a retired educator. And Mitch, if I didn't want to go to school or I needed to take an R&R &R, or I just thought, you know, I have a runny nose, I couldn't call in my lesson plan. I had to either take a leave of it, take a day off, which went against my, leave, my days I was allowed, and if I went over those days, my pay would be docked. Right. Well, these, the public service commissioners are the third highest paid state officials. They make a very large sum. I, their salary is very large. It's governor, attorney general, and the PSC. I think they need to be there. I think they need to be at the meetings. They need to vote in person. Mm -hmm. And again, the public doesn't know this. Well, and especially with so many of the things that they are voting on being so essential to Montanans, they need to be there in person, I would think, more than I would just calling so. it in. And they need to have discussions, mm -hmm. you know, and, and they need to ask questions. Uh, I have read about their relationship with Northwestern Energy, and Northwestern Energy has at times said, when they said, you know, we want to talk to you about this, they've said, oh, you don't have a right to talk to us about that. And, and this was something to do with... Um, it had to do with a rate increase a couple years ago. And they said, well, okay, then we'll let the, um, the con you know, there's two others. There's the MEIC, which is the environmental impact, uh, Montana environmental impact. I ah, can't think of the last, what the C stands for. But, and then there's the, the Bob Nelson runs the, it's the Constitution Watchdog Agency, sort of like the PSC. It's almost <laughs> like the PSC is duplicating but they passed off their responsibility to Bob Nelson, who works for the state. And they said, okay, we'll let him handle it. When in fact, that is exactly what the Public Service Commission should be doing. And time and time again, if you read the minutes, they defer to other agencies or they refuse to ask and they just rubber stamp wow. what energy wants. It's wrong. It is wrong. It's, it's very wrong. It, it, again, it goes back to those pocketbook issues, uh, transparency, accountability, and and doing what's best for the the person, who, people who voted them in, the ratepayers of Montana. Definitely. So my final question for you, because you said that you started right before the deadline in March, 
how has your campaign been going, especially now that we've been, you know, trapped inside with this COVID-19? <laughs> <laughs> well, I got a new kitty, so I have somebody to talk to. Oh, good. Um, yeah. Um, and you have your cute little dog. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, since I don't know anything else, it, um, it's challenging. Uh, it makes fundraisers sort of out of the question. Um, it makes knocking on doors out of the question. So I think at this point, when I, when I look ahead, I look at the fact that we will be doing um, online, digital mailings, um, you know, depending on, on how much money a campaign can raise, or I can raise whether I would be doing anything beyond that, like, you know, TV ads. Um, I truly believe if my message gets out and people hear what has been going on with the PSC, that, you know, it would be a no-brainer who they're going to vote for. Mm -hmm. Republican, Democrat, I mean, it should be a nonpartisan issue. It's right. a pocketbook book issue. So it's really getting the message out there. So that's been challenging. Um, I meet with my campaign manager online, and I don't have a primary opponent, and the Republicans do. So right now I'm basically trying to get my name out there and call like the people in the two Democrats in Fallon County. And, and they're always, they really want to talk. I think they're lonely out there. <laughs> Probably they don't have a whole lot of people to talk to about political. No, so. no. But I mean, it is, it's challenging. You know, I, I declared on March 6th and then on March 13th, because I've got a lot of friends who are still educators. That's when Governor Bullock canceled school for two weeks. And I was right. like, oh, and, and it's sort of the restrictions got tighter and tighter and, you know, the only consolation is everyone's in this together. Yep. Everyone's doing the same thing. <laughs> everyone's doing the same thing. The, the difference for me is that I, outside of Billings and is, I'm not a known entity and boy name recognition in Montana is really important. Right. So to kind of help you a little bit, is there any way that, um, or do you have any ways that people could get a hold of you um, or a hold of your campaign if they're interested at all? Abs absolutely. I have a Facebook page at McMurtry for PSC, and then I have a website, McMurtry for PSC.com. And both of the fours are the number four. And then both those accounts link to Act Blue if they want to make a donation. Great. And um, I'm more than happy for that. I, I appreciate any amount that people could donate. And what is your Act Blue address? Just so that people maybe don't have to go to your website if they've heard enough on here. Um, you mean my email address? No, just like the Act Blue, www.actblue, I think it is. Oh, right, right. Yeah. Is that? Do you, do you have that link on your web page? It is. It's on the web page. It's okay, so just go to your web page and it's yeah. on there. Yes. Okay, and they great. Just, yeah, I was talking to a woman in Red Lodge and I said, oh, I'll send you some information on my a letter. And she goes, no, 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 just do you have Act Blue? And so... She didn't even, she's just made a pledge just from the act blue because she, she's don't waste the paper. Said, okay. <laughs> great. Well, thank you so much, Valerie, for your time and have a great rest of your day. Thanks, Mitch. You too. Thank you.